day three, Saturday, Comic Con, all age time. Oh boy. Marble panel. Game time. There is fog in the Hall H. There is fog. What are they cooking? It's time. There's a Deadpool there. job just minutes ago it became the number one r-rated opening weekend of all time yeah! at the same time at the he's same the time he's got the, the marvel cinematic universe of which deadpool wolverine was our 34th just crossed 30 billion dollars at the box office which is which is crazy we had a great time here on thursday we had a great drone show and they presented us after did you guys see this drone show that was gigantic <laughs> There was a guy from the Guinness World Book of Records who came out and handed Ludia Esposito and I these plaques. We didn't really do the drone show, but we got the plaques because it was the biggest fictional character drone show ever, uh, which is cool. We'll take it. Guinness Book. But you know what I like? I like that Hall H doesn't just look back. We've looked back. Deadpool and Wolverine's in theaters. Hall H looks forward. What is coming up next? So today we're going to talk about three movies we have coming out in 2025, the first of which is Captain America, Brave New World. And we have the cast, Rob. Let's, uh, let's hear it. Let's bring the cast out, man. Let's bring them out. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, please, Mr. Tim Blake Nelson.
say to him now? Well, he said, I didn't have a movie. I said, well, you're not 5'11". <laughs> See what I'm talking about? I got a movie, but he ain't gonna be 5'11", though. <laughs> yes, Tom Holland, fuck you. <laughs> Uh, oh, you, well, you just said it, right? I mean, there was a movie you guys all might remember for ten years ago called Captain America: The Winter Soldier. <laughs> it's a film that is grounded, relatively grounded, it's still in the Marvel universe. But that's really what this film is: is a return to that. And I think when you see some things, you'll see that it is that level of grounded action movie that we also can do in the uh, in the MCU. Right. Uh, and Anthony, unlike Steve Rogers, Sam doesn't have the Super Soldier serum. How does Sam's lack of superpowers affect your approach to the action scenes? Oh, very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sam is surrounded by a, uh, a host of very good, um, intricate characters that help him move through the plot of the story. He's not so much a, a muscle-bound guy, he's more of a, a cerebral, uh, th uh, thoughtful character. You know, if, if, when you first see Sam in Falcon Winter Soldier, he's a counselor. So he keeps that counseling, he keeps that approach throughout the course of the character in all of the films. Yeah, right on. Now, Tim, very cerebral answer there. Cerebral. Very cerebral point point point. I will punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and counsel you. Yes, yes, yes. Tim, it's been 16 years since you first played this role. What's different about the leader this time around? Much because I, um, I, I give it to him, Tim. Give it to him. Give it to him, Tim. No spoilers. I want them to bring me back. <laughs> and uh, 16 years. Yeah, right. <laughs> Can I say how happy I am that he's back? No, no, no little tag left behind. That, that, that he was there on the floor with his head beginning to bulge. And now here we are. Yeah, and by the time I brought back again, uh, to Pluto, brother, where art thou, will be coming fabulous. <laughs> So um, anyway, uh, they wrote uh, a, a great story for him, and uh, I think people are going to be pretty excited. All right. When your dreams come true and you get the call, you walk through the door. Um, I, I have a, a great deal of gratitude for all the fans who really had this dream come true because it was fan casting that linked us together. And we're starting to talk. And so everyone wanted to be do one thing or another thing. There's been a lot of guessing going about who I really am. But to be with this cast, especially Anthony Mackie, who brings it every single time, in every way that he possibly can. Can I say it? I am. Can I say it? I can say it! Wow! To finally unleash it. I am the king of the Serpent Society. I am Seth Volker Sidewinder! Get him! 
Don't give up. It's been like this for a long time. It's not my fault. Now, you asked me a question about being the president. I did, yeah. <laughs> I'll make no reference to current history. <laughs> None. But this is a character that's based on the very, um, a lot of history developed with, with Bill, or who, who played the character previously. Uh, um, but now, I am Thaddeus, and I am delighted, and I am proud to become a member of the Marvel Universe. I have been watching fantastic actors, some of which are here tonight, have a really good time working in the Marvel Universe, and I wanted a piece of the action. Yeah! And I'm very proud to be uh, in this film. I think it has turned out to be fantastic. Say that again. <laughs> Marvelous. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. Got the cast of Captain America: Brave New World. Thank you. My, my dream of a nerdy life can't get any more complete. I hear Harrison Ford say adamantium. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Now, we have another movie next year that comes out in May, and it's called Thunderbolts. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage director of Thunderbolts, Jake Schreier.
write your monologue in that pivotal scene in Act Two that you would dress up. <laughs> guys, you guys are the worst. Nobody dressed up except for Julia. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> Florence Pugh. Uh, she just really has your back and she just really doesn't. Okay, she doesn't want to wear it for you. Oh God, if we could just thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey Kevin, help me understand this. Harrison Ford is playing President Thunderbolt Ross in Brave New World, but he's not actually in Thunderbolts. Tell me not. That is correct. Mr. Ford plays Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross. And these wonderful actors play the Thunderbolts because sometimes in 85 years of comic history, writers and artists use the same name. <laughs> hey, Jake. Oh, the, oh, the asterisk. Uh, I can tell you that it means something. <laughs> you want me to tell them what it means? You tell them. Yeah. No. Yeah. Do it! them together is that they don't play well together. Um, in terms of their dynamics, I mean, we had a, a, a real ride because we actually loved working with each other and we clearly understand each other because we've all accidentally matched Bar Lewis. <laughs> totally. Oh, Lewis. The Geraldine and Lewis, welcome to the MCU. <laughs> well, Rob, right? That's me, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you understand the challenges and the weight and responsibility of a three-letter name, right? Rob, Bob, I feel you there. I, I just want to, I see you, mm -hmm. and I, I connect with you there, and, and I, I'm sure that you know as much as I do about Bob for that reason. <laughs> hey, terrific. Um, Hannah. You're a returning MCU villain, potentially former villain. Yeah! Well, it's good to be back. Um, and, you know, coming back and working with such incredible actors and characters as well, it's been such an honor and a pleasure. And where we left Ava, and where we find Ava, and how she works with others is going to be interesting. Right. I can say, guys. Hi, Julia. Hi, Rob. We've seen hints. We've seen hints of Valentina as a sly puppet master working behind the scenes. Yes. Let's see a lot more of her in this movie. What is she after? Oh, I'm so happy you asked me that question. She, Valentina, is after power, control, and I would say just generally, she wants to kick ass in the Marvel Universe. Yeah. That's a good answer. I like that. And David, uh, not really a question, I'm just, I, you stole your uniform from set. No. Okay. I, I got it on Etsy. <laughs> a lovely woman in Vancouver who does Red Guardian and Green Goblin exclusively. <laughs> Hey, Wyatt, 
What can you tease about your character in Thunderbolts? Woo! Everyone's gonna fucking love me. <laughs> I don't know, Rob. I, I get put up on this stage. I feel like Kevin, this is a recurring thing. I just say, I don't know, and you have some pure joy out of me. No clue what to say. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I think it's gonna be fun. It's really, really, really fun to be with a group of actors that you love being with and uh, have a good time. So whatever comes out and you guys watch and you guys see on film was um, one of my favorite experiences that I've ever had working, uh, just being with a group of great people. And that, I hope, comes, comes through, honestly, uh, through, you know, I guess it's a bad answer for me, but for everybody. <laughs> One year from today, exactly one year from this weekend, we are releasing the first Marvel's First Family into the MCU, the Fantastic Four. We have not, we have not even started filming this yet. It starts filming Tuesday in the UK. Pedro is there and sent a picture with all of them. You saw that online. But our director, our director was willing to fly all through the night to be here with you, ladies and gentlemen, our director, Matt Shackman. I'm still awake, I'm still standing. Welcome, Matt. Hey, Matt, the Fantastic Four have some of the most iconic powers in Marvel history, from Reed's stretchy limbs to Johnny's fire abilities. How do you want to bring those powers to life on screen? Uh, I mean, I, I love the Fantastic Four. I love their power set, and it's one of the things we've worked the hardest on because we want to be true to the comics, but we also want to be true to life. We want to root it in physics and anatomy and all those things that can make it feel incredibly real. So we've done tons of tests and concept art and storyboarding and VFX tests and research. We've talked to scientists. We've talked to animal experts. We've talked to everybody. We've gone out into the desert to find the best rock to make the thing from, right? Um, we've done everything we can to make it amazing. Right on. And you journeyed through the decades with WandaVision, and we know that fantastic <laughs> WandaVision has directed every episode. We know that Fantastic Four is set in a version of 1960s New York. Were there any 60s details you wanted to make sure to include? I mean, the same approach to the power is we want to we want to do our research, we want to be authentic, we want to bring it to life in a very real way, but at the same time, we also are not doing just the 60s, right? We're doing a retro future 60s. So a lot of it was about finding inspiration from the futurists of that time, especially Sid Mead, and using that as, a, as sort of inspiration to build a whole new world that is part the New York that you know from the 60s and something you've never seen before. But more than just the visual aesthetics, uh, the 60s to me is all about optimism. It's about looking to the stars, about dreaming, about traveling into space. It's about how with the right heart and the right mind you can do anything, which is what the Fantastic Four is all about. And so it's more about capturing the spirit and the tone, which is not a bad segue, because I put something together for you guys. Yeah! And we haven't started shooting yet, but we put together a little bit of pre-shoot stuff, some animatics, we, we've, we've kind of cobbled together something to give you a sense of what this movie will be about. Um, and so, do you guys want to see it? Yeah! Let's do it! Vanessa Kirby. Yeah! And Mr. Fantastic, Pedro Castro. Woo! This is the first time all in public, Marvel's first family. Oh, uh, I don't 
know, I feel like that was uh, just a couple days ago. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still processing it. I'll, you you, you, yeah, you got to give me a few more hours. All right, we'll come back with some more questions. <laughs> hey, Pedro, you've had a role in the party. <laughs> You family. I don't, I, I, nobody knows that Matt and I have known each other for like 25 years. <laughs> and um, we started with the same talent manager actually, and he almost became my roommate in 1999, but he came and he saw the place and was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's different. <laughs> That's a true story. Yep. I love that. Hey, Vanessa and Joseph, you two play siblings. Did you do any brother-sister bonding to prepare? Well, we're both the only Brits in the cast, aren't we, pretty much? That's the truth. So we're, we're going to get down the pub and make everyone come with us, because we're filming in London, aren't we, where the London is, so we've got to show everyone a good time. Seems only right. Yes. <laughs> with some MCU veterans. Did you get any advice from fellow Marvel actors about joining the MCU? Um, good question, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I did, you know what, actually I did, um, this is going to be a boring, fairly earnest answer, but I got a really nice uh, text message from Mark Ruffalo because, you know, uh, to sort of demystify the process of motion capture and because it's something I've never really done before. And he sent me this very long, um, generous text about how, you know, just simplifying it and taking away kind of the, I was a bit scared of the technology and just sort of saying, you know, it's just like, you know, making scenes like, you know, normal scene work. So that was really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah! Um, Hey, Joseph, with the 60-plus years legacy of this title, and this being Marvel Studios' first venture with these characters, what's one thing you hope to bring out from your character that fans could be excited for? Johnny! Evan? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to bring to it? I think we're all collectively going to bring uh, an essence that is a family, rather than thinking about what we individually are going to bring. We're, it's a team sport, this. And we're all going to work very hard to bring a feeling of a family to this, to this film. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay, a question for Vanessa. After a week of rehearsals and the pre-shoot, what new things have you learned about your family? Uh, individually or together? <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know what? I honestly, I don't think I've laughed so much in a rehearsal period. In we laugh so much and it's so beautiful to be at work and you know we're all really so dedicated to try and make it the best we can and we feel so kind of um, that we want to do it justice and it's amazing reading the comics from the 60s and all the way up and seeing this family that has traveled with so many people in life and feel so honored to be a, you know a part of it and um, but to laugh through it which I hope we can capture in the movie because when you read the comics, it's got such joy in it, and so I think you, we can all say we've laughed a lot. We've cried with laughs on many days, so hopefully we can bring that to the movies. But uh, you start shooting on Monday back in the UK. Don't you have to get we, to we got to go. Yeah. <laughs> they, they literally have to fly back, but the good thing about that is they have their own fantastic car, which will take them back to the UK, hopefully, very, very quickly.
guys, those are our three films for 2025. And what's exciting is uh, that the Fantastic Four cast and many other members you've seen today will also be appearing in the two Avengers films that we're making. Yes, yes. Do you want to hear a little bit about the Avenger films? Yeah! One thing that, that people uh, have been asking uh, of late is who the heck is going to direct these two movies? because we had put all of our passion, all our love, all our imagination into the Winter Soldier, into Civil War, into Infinity War, climaxing all of it with Avengers Endgame. That, that four movie run was incredible, and it left us creatively spent with all of our emotions on the floor. In the time since, through a very special story, Joe and I have come to potentially see a road forward with you all. Uh, and it's the biggest story that Marvel Comics ever told. It's the first comic book run that I read as a kid that made me fall in love with comics. It's the reason that Ant and I are standing up here. And I think you all know the name of it. The name? There it is! <laughs> yes. Get ready! We are in fact doing it. Uh, I, bet you, I bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> look at, as fans of the comic know, Secret Wars is incredibly ambitious. Uh, the magnitude of the filmmaking, the vastness of the storytelling, world-colliding epicness. All of this made Joe and I understand that we would need to make another essential movie first in order for all of us to be no. ready for Secret Wars. No, now, no, no. There is one very, very important character that is required to, to do Secret Wars justice. No, no, and no. And it's a character that Marvel has not introduced yet. And it could be the most important character in all of the Marvel Universe. No! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Two We're going to bring Victor Von Doom to the screen. He is, he, is more, he is one of the more complex characters in all of comics, right, Kevin? I mean, this is potentially one of the more entertaining characters it. in no, all of yeah, fiction. Yeah. If we're going to do this, if we're going to yeah. bring him to movie theaters yeah. worldwide, then I think we're going to need the greatest actor in the world no way. to play that character. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as proof of the 
unimaginable possibilities in the Marvel multi-universe. We give you the one person who could play Victor Von Doom. characters. What the fuck? <laughs> 